Let's go ahead and bring back in uh, Congressman Flanagan, Rick Unger. Gentlemen, let's go ahead and kind of bring things down to a, a little bit of a, an end here. But something just came up a moment ago. Congressman, I want to ask you this first. Jeb Bush, where does he go from here? Wherever he wants. Uh, he's an elder statesman of the party. He's very well thought of. His, his, uh, his, his brand is not in any way tarnished or damaged. Um, I, I think he'll go where, where he pleases, and that'll be up to him. But there's no road that's closed to him except the one that leads to 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue. All right, the road and to 1600. If I had a life to live like that, that'd be good. <laughs> the road to 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue is the one that Hillary Clinton would like to grab. The CNN town hall was held earlier tonight. Rick, to you. It would seem as if in this one that, that Hillary Clinton was trying to get away from some of the attacks. She's trying to focus a little bit more on maybe family, some stories here and there. Rick, come on. She keeps trying to get back into people's good graces here and still tries to be warm and fuzzy. It's not working. No, it's not going to work. It's just not who she is. Look, you know, I'm, I have to admit I'm kind of getting tired of the untrustworthy thing. I get it. I completely understand how people feel. They're not going to change. But that doesn't mean that Hillary Clinton can't be elected president of the United States. My prediction has been all along that this is going to be a hold your nose kind of an election. A lot of people are going to end up voting for one side or the other and not be particularly excited about it, but they're going to do it. Uh, I still predict that uh, Hillary will probably, you know, look, the only thing that stands between Hillary and the White House right now, because it's not Bernie Sanders, is the possibility of an indictment. Assuming that doesn't happen, and it could, um, I still say the odds on favor to win in November is Hillary Clinton. You bring up a good point when you said, hold your nose. Here's a good one for you. And Rick, it's to you first. No, you're, I think you're exactly right. Who's more likely to hold their nose? I mean, when you look at it, the Democrats going to hold their nose and vote for Hillary. The Republicans going to hold their nose and vote for Trump. Do you think anybody might hold their nose and go the other way? Well, but as, as yeah, actually, there is certainly a possibility that some Democrats could end up voting for Trump. Uh, I don't that think is astounding. I got to tell you something. You're the first person to say that out loud, and true. that's astounding. It's true. I see polls. Uh, it's true. There's a lot of Democrats who are, A, going to be very angry that Bernie got beat because they're, they're believers, and they look at Trump with some similarities. But as you know as well as anybody, the, the win comes from the middle. The win comes from the non-committed, and I think that those people are going to have to go to Hillary. Look, let's also not make some mistakes here. Despite what Donald Trump says, a Republican has to get 35% of the Latino vote or it becomes very, very hard for them to win the White House. I do not believe for one second that Donald Trump is getting 35% of the Latino vote. Congressman, I got about 45 seconds left. Do you agree with Rick and see people on the Democratic side actually then holding their nose with Hillary and going to Donald Trump? I'll go in one further and say 20% come over in the, by the general election if Hillary's the nominee. I think Hillary is such a damaged brand that there's going to be so much nose holding to get her done that the millennials who don't strongly identify as a Democrat but do strongly identify as liberal or have liberal tendencies will be looking elsewhere. I, I, the Bush reelect was a hold your nose reelect. The Obama reelect was a hold your nose reelect. This isn't a reelect, and Hillary's going to have a very hard time. Never before in my adult life have but I actually seen. What I, well, Go ahead. Say it. What I heard the congressman predict was a low ver voter turnout, and I think he's probably right about yeah. that. This can help the Republicans, there's no question. It's, it's going to be an interesting election. It is. I mean, none of us ever believed Donald Trump would be the nominee. Now I think most of us believe he will be. I think we're coming and to that realization very, hard very to quickly. Know where that goes. An odiferous campaign, if you will, in my adult life. I don't think I've ever seen anything like it, but it's still going to be no. fun. <laughs> Congressman Michael Patrick Flanagan, Rick Unger, gentlemen, thank you so much for staying with us. I certainly appreciate it. We will talk to you both soon, and Congressman will get another shot at Rick Unger somewhere down the road. I want to thank all of our guests for being here tonight who've done yeoman-like work. I want to remind you that the hard line tomorrow join us right here six o'clock eastern time but before i leave i want to thank every single person on this staff who sat in that control room for three hours the people out here on the floor the people who have done the work behind the scenes everybody here has worked their absolute butts off again to make sure that you get the latest information it is the most dedicated crew that i've ever worked with i'm proud to work with them so we'll talk to you tomorrow on the hard line rock on true believers see you then